Welcome to the Village Green NBTV show on the environment in Newport Beach. I'm Nancy Gardner, your host. Well, we're going back to Rogers Gardens today and find out what we can do in the summer to liven up our yards, and we're going to find out all sorts of nifty ideas. Good morning, I'm Suzanne. I'm a horticulturist here at Rogers Gardens. And we're going to talk about, you know, it's summer, we're not, we didn't get much rain, and although there are right now no specific restrictions in our area, still yes. we want to be really, really cautious. So um, thoughts for this time of year in particular? I think just reminding people, I think when we're in a drought, people uh, get a little bit alarmed and you want to say, well, we live in a desert and we've <laughs> changed it to not being a desert. So we should always be conserving water as much as we can. But um, of course, planting things that require less water, um, having practices like losing your lawn and adding something a little bit prettier so that you can still enjoy a nice little vast area, whether you use decomposed granite or you can use a low growing ground cover, but you can have a beautiful lush garden. It doesn't have to be cactus and white rocks. Right, no, and I, I know in uh, one of our previous shows here, you brought out a number of succulents that had lovely flowers or wonderful colors, so it's not like you have to have that just one start green either. No, no, and having a lot of beautiful color is definitely a thing you can do in a water-wise garden. It is, yeah. So well, people have an, all sorts of reasons for having gardens. Some it's just the aesthetics of, of their home. They want to have it all look mm -hmm. a certain way. Um, some of us are like, oh good, I'll get some nice fresh vegetables out of it. Right. And some are really, the more gardens we have, the more we help sustain what, butterflies, hummingbirds, bees. And e even the planet with, you know, the more plants you have, the better it is for the environment. And so that's a, a great point as well. So talk about some of the, of the things we have here today, what they do, who they attract. Uh, yes, so gardening with a purpose is a great way to look at a habitat garden. You want to bring in plants and look at it and say, what will this bring to my garden? Well, this kufia here will bring hummingbirds by the dozens to your garden. This is one of the biggest, hottest plants for hummingbirds. It is, it is really wonderful. We have also, this is my flower of the year. Each year I kind of go a little crazy and start uh -huh. planting a lot of one thing. And this year it's Agastache. And it is in the mint family. And so I'm gonna set this here. And you might want to smell the foliage there. It is mm, sort of just a lemon mint. It, it's really minty, minty. This here is also another Agastache. They come in a lot of different colors and a lot of different forms, but they all have that that gorgeous mint tea flavor and you can make tea out of it as it and even just throw leaves uh -huh. into your drinks and things like that so the hummingbirds and the butterflies and the bees all love this agastache this is a really interesting muted color i mean it's Isn't just so it pretty subtle. yeah and they it comes in yellow and red and obviously the blues and so agastache is a really cool plant and it is a perennial so it'll come back every year um, it'll probably, you know, you want to chop it back at the end of the summer, uh, beginning of the winter, and it'll come right back. And and that attracts, you say? Hummingbirds, butterflies, and bees. Okay. So all of the, all of the great pollinators. And this is Scabiosa. It's just such a classic plant, but this is a great butterfly attractor because it has that, that landing pad that oh. they really enjoy, much like the, I'm going to reach back here for a second, much like this, which is the yarrow. And yarrow has that landing pad and uh -huh. it has multiple flowers. So that's why butterflies really like this. You don't have to plant a lot of different plants to get a lot of different flowers. And butterflies will spend a long time on each of these plants taking in nutrition for themselves. So it's, it's really nice. This is, oh, this is another Agastache. Look at this color. Oh, wow. This is about how big the plant gets. Oh, so it's perfect for a pot. Isn't it great? Look at that color. It's like sherbet yeah. orange. So that's that's a good one. And let's see. Oh, so if you have shade uh -huh. or just some morning sun, this um, abutilon flowering maple is a great plant. Hummingbirds love this. Birds love to hop in this plant because sometimes if it gets little bugs or something, the finches love to go in there. But the hummingbirds, even though it's not a little tubular plant, they love, love, love this. And this will flower on and off all year. So when this yarrow dies back for the season, you're gonna have this beautiful green foliage here left. 
oh. and it can be a grass substitute. Yeah. A lot of people do this. Up in Northern California, they have um, beautiful foresty areas that have all this um, gorgeous yarrow growing and you can walk on it and it's really, yeah. really pretty. So um, a lot of people are looking for lawn substitutes. You can have this in the summer and in the winter, you're gonna have just oh, that that's, green that's, matte of yeah, color. That's nice. And it's all drought tolerant. Oh, well that's even nicer. It is. And what it else is. do you have out there in the way of plants? Oh, well this is um, a little, this is a little abutilon, uh -huh. like this one here, but this this one will only get about three to four feet tall. So isn't it pretty? Yeah, very. And then, of course, because I feel like it's a Rogers Garden specialty, we have our milkweed. So this is the narrow leaf milkweed. It's a California native. We also have, oh, goodness. We also have this other milkweed, it's called Asclepias californica, so it is a true native as well. And the butterflies will land on the milkweed. They don't take um, they don't take anything from the flowers. They just lay their eggs on it. That's what makes it a host plant. And so you can see this one actually has some eggs on it. I don't think we can show it close <laughs> enough, but there are eggs on this plant and then it will become caterpillars eventually and they will eat this whole plant down to the nubs <laughs> and then the plant will just regenerate again. It'll just keep growing. And um, Now is cycle, that a, a full sun or? This is full sun. It can take a little shade, but the butterflies really like it best when it's in the sun. So uh, either of these milkweeds, sometimes we have one more variety of milkweed, but this is what's going to bring all the, milk, uh, the milkweeds, the monarchs to your garden. So will they, and these are the only plants they lay eggs on? Will they lay eggs on, say, a yarrow or something? No, they won't. This is their host plant. And so most butterflies and moths have a very specific plant. So if, for example, if you like um, passion flowers, uh -huh. um, that is the host plant of the Gulf Fritillary um, butterfly. And it's an orange butterfly, a little bit smaller than a monarch. And um, on your citrus, sometimes you will get the uh, swallowtail they will lay their eggs on citrus and then the the caterpillars, it's kind of weird, they look like bird poop and they're called bird poop caterpillars, <laughs> but that's their disguise uh -huh. to keep uh, birds from eating them. And so different, different um, butterflies and moths have different host plants. So pretty neat. Pretty neat. So uh, a garden, even a drought tolerant garden has to be watered. It does. And uh, we were talking <laughs> earlier about my ongoing wars with hoses. <laughs> and you have a couple of different ones to show us. Yes. Well, um, I think also talking about hose wands, um, this is such an easy way to get your garden watered. You can set it uh, and turn it off because I think a lot of um, cities have restrictions for actually just letting water run. Yeah, they do. So if Newport you're washing, does have that. Yeah, if you're having, you're washing your car or something, you could use this and you can shut it off. So that's really, really and, important. And I have to say they're very handy. Our cameraman, Ed Owen, gave me one for Christmas and oh. I've used it very, very nicely. And it's great for getting in the back. And it's I, these DRAM um, wands are just fabulous. So. Okay, my favorite thing. We don't have my favorite hose right now. We're sold out. But this is, I think, for people who are having to water um, on a schedule, having a soaker hose, a really good soaker hose, um, like this one. This one is really, really nice. You can set it out, turn it on, leave it for an hour or so, and it's going to really deep, deep water so, your garden. Um, so are, are they already pre the holes there and yeah. you, so in other words they're every six inches or every foot or yeah there it's throughout the entire um, hose and then you just hook it on to if you want to drag your hose out to get it further um, you just hook it on right here and you place it wherever you want either in a straight line or you can wind it through your plants and it will slowly release water which is really the best way to water your plants to just get it really really deep you don't want any runoff you don't want puddles of anything you want it to just water deeply and so this is this is a great way to do it I feel like also if you are a new gardener and you're looking at your garden and the ground is hard as a rock and you don't want to have to spend hours with a pickaxe <laughs> this is a great friend because you can set the soaker do hose down let it do all the work when the ground is really nice and wet 
you can dig it up super easily. Well, I can remember my, my father because particularly where we were in Shortcliffe, it was adobe. Nobody ever gardened there because they had the first house mm -hmm. in, on that particular lot. And I can remember with the shovel, you dig a couple of, like this and then you would soak it. And then you dig it, and then you'd soak it. I mean, it took forever, that but that's what you had to do. <laughs> is not fun at all. So a soaker hose is really helpful. That would have made life so much easier. <laughs> yes, it, but it's it's good for a lot of different reasons. And then also just having a really good quality hose. Um, we talk about how hoses, they kink and they're terrible, but having a hose pot and putting your hose away each time is well, a little bit of discipline within your life of putting yeah, your hose away. I, I know it's that. not fun. I love to just like throw it <laughs> yeah, and come exactly. back to it. But when you wrap it up again and get it in that hose pot, it's such a great thing. But if you don't want to do that, we do have these really cool hoses here that are kind of like this, this soft fabric. We are sold out right now, but um, this soft fabric, and so you can pick it up and grab it and throw it all over the garden. It is such a great hose. I'm going to I'm going to send you the information on these zero G hoses because they are so amazing. One issue with with hoses besides the kinking is that as you're dragging particularly a heavier hose around, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful that you're not knocking off a branch or something, but I think right. you have some things to help with that. I do. Um, and kind of like the theme right now we're so into the summer and we just want to relax and we want to entertain and we want to kind of add a little magic to our garden. So that's why I brought a lot of things just to add something. So these are hose guides and these you just put them in the ground and you know in a strategic area where you might want to go around the corner with the hose uh -huh. and the hose guide will help the hose go to where it needs it to go without, without crunching your plants. And you know these are really cute and pretty and they'll definitely make you aware of where you need to you know. Uh -huh. This is very subtle and yeah. nice and it is a great thing to keep your hose in line, so to speak. Okay, and so then we have some fun things for the garden, I think. Yes. Just, I think everybody's getting ready to entertain maybe this weekend and throughout the summer. So, you know, just add a few things onto your tabletop, like candle holders. These are so pretty, and they look great even without a candle on them. Uh -huh. So that's, you know, candles can sometimes melt in the sun, but just bring them out for your event, take them away when you go back in. And we also have these really cool little um, solar lights. So these come, these have little fairy uh, rice lights inside. Uh -huh. And so you just take this. Oh, I see. I you go like that you uh -huh. and you just put it in the ground. And as long as you have sun on it all day, at nighttime, they'll automatically go on and you'll have a really pretty lighted walkway. These are fairly inexpensive. So you can buy a bunch of them to have people go through your garden. We also have these. We have these cute little mason jar solar tops like this. And then the whole thing glows? Yep, you just put it in a um, oh, tree. Oh, what fun. We have some really pretty ones that are kind of a frosted glass. And when they're charged up at night, they look like a flickering candle inside as well. So that one's really nice. And then we have some fancier ones. These can be tabletop or you can hang them, but they're glass. And so it's a little bit, you know, nicer. Well, what a nice uh, hostess gift too, if you're yeah. going to someone for a, a bring an it, outdoor party or and something. And even just one on the table uh -huh. is really pretty. And then if, if you're into, you know, if you have a big tree or something like that, we have these really pretty paper solar lights oh. as well. And so, I mean, there's just a million ways to add a little something, a little magic. So when you have your evenings, I feel like we're always trying to light up different areas. And uh -huh. We can have the string lights, but we can also have things a little bit more subtle. Well, and it's always nice when, when it's solar because then you don't have to worry about plugging it in and unplugging it. And yeah, or charging it up or yeah. something like that. So I agree. It's just a great, great way to have a beautiful summer evening watching so, your flowers. Exactly. So. <laughs> I'm always into the vegetable thing, and one of the questions I asked you was, is it too late? You said basically, yes. So explain that. So if you haven't got a vegetable garden going yet, it's, it's a pretty huge endeavor to start a vegetable garden when it's getting very, very warm, and so you have to really be on top of the watering and making sure that they can root well and grow. But if you have, for example, tomatoes going already, as a lot of us do, they might be kind of getting a little scruffy at this mm -hmm. point and kind of getting ready to go. So plant another crop of tomatoes. That's a very easy thing. Tomatoes love the heat. They're very easy to just, you know, throw another one in there and it'll grow for a while. 
If you live in an area where it might be a little bit cooler, like here at the coast, we have a lot of cool season tomatoes. Oh. Even though it feels warm right now, uh -huh. it's technically a little cooler than yeah. growing inland. And um, you can probably throw a zucchini in if you have the space for a zucchini plant. But everything else is just maintaining, maintaining. So fertilize, make sure that you're watering deeply, not too often, but just making sure that those roots are growing down. And so when it's a really hot day, the sun doesn't bake the moisture out of the soil. Well, I, I experimented with corn this year. Oh, wow. And it turned out really well. I mean, I couldn't have a big crop. I don't have that kind of space. But, right. Oh, it's like tomatoes. You know, you pick a tomato off the vine and eat it. It's, and it's different. Saying, you pick the corn and you just boil it right wow. away. Wow. Corn nice. is such a, such a fun crop and the way it pollinates yes. itself and everything. Is, I mean, it was very oh. interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, all, all these things, you can grow herbs right now. You can throw some basil, you know, to have for your weekend meals and things like that. You can have rosemary and thyme and other things that are more drought tolerant but I just don't think that I would start a vegetable garden right now. You can you can start maybe at the end of September with your winter crops mm -hmm. and so in the meantime get your areas ready, get you know clear it out, amend the soil and put some put some nice color in there in the meantime. Okay well something I was just thinking of was something like the yarrow. Mm -hmm. um, if someone said oh I've got a you know place in the yard I'm taking out the lawn or I've had gravel and I want to do something more. Mm -hmm. Do you have to, I mean, do you plant the next one right next to it or do they spread out a bit? They will spread. Okay. They'll spread a couple of feet, different varieties, different um, kinds of spreading and different looks of the foliage. And um, you can't see it right now, but on the hill in back of me, there are some beautiful yarrow over there that oh, are oh, just, I see them, yeah. uh -huh. and so they get really, really fluffy and light. And I just, banged into this. Oh, so I just want to say right. one oh, more yeah. thing. Oh, isn't this that is pretty? a really cute thing to throw into your garden. Uh -huh. It's just a little steak and the you candle. can throw a candle in there and it's going to throw some beautiful, beautiful light out. I love, I love these things. Yeah. I think they're really fun to, to do that with. And my one last, my one last vegetable thing. If, if you really want to grow some vegetables, get a Get a pot like this, it's so easy to maintain this. You could have a, a tomato, some lettuce, and maybe some basil in just this bag here and move it around your garden so that it's not, you know, really kind of consuming everything that you have, all of your resources, all uh -huh. of your space. You could have a, a gorgeous little salsa garden in this pot. And so it'd be a great gift too. Oh yeah. Wouldn't it? That would be. So, um, yeah, I forgot about that. So we're taking hummingbirds and things. I, I noticed in the back we have some beautiful geraniums. Yes. I, what I it, mean, they sort of fell out of favor, but are they coming no. back at all? <laughs> you know, I think they're a classic. They're like jeans and a white t-shirt. You can <laughs> never get rid of geraniums because they are a great plant. And if people say they're, they're you know, out of favor, well, they're not. They could never be. There are too many plants that are just... They do so well all the time. And geraniums, maybe we get into different kinds of geraniums or different colors of uh -huh. geraniums, but I think they're a classic. They're so easy. Well, they do so well in pots. And they don't they, seem to have a lot of natural pests or anything. They don't. I mean, they have a little budworm that'll sometimes get in them, but like even like those little variegated ones over there are so cute. And the scented geraniums, a lot of people really like the scented geraniums now as a house yeah, plant yeah. or as a garden plant that'll just spill out of a container. I think geraniums are... I, I really, you know, I like a classic plant. I do. So we were speaking of, of, of these as attracting mm -hmm. various uh, birds and butterflies and bees and that sort of thing. And here Pests, comes a bee. Are there or something that that a gardener would look for with these if he's if she or she is planting them for the first time? Is there anything that would be particularly a problem? Um, no, most of these plants they don't even have pest problems. This is a great thing about them, is. Um, because of the amount of pollinators that come around them, I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem. You, of, of course, always wanna look for healthy plants. Uh -huh. And um, the, these, like these Agastache, as much as I love them, I am also very cautious of the fact that they are brittle. Like you can't even believe they'll, they break very easily until you get them in the ground and then don't touch them ever again. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Sometimes you'll see some of these Agastache plants and they kind of have flopping 
um, little branches, but uh -huh. it's just because they're very, um, like just even this, I know this is terrible, this kufia here, even just from me talking, oh, yeah. has kind of uh -huh. snapped a couple branches. Right, poor thing. It's very, very brittle, but once you put it in the ground, it strengthens up, and this plant will become about three feet tall by three feet wide, and you can't, you just can't even imagine how many hummingbirds attack this plant. Well, that will be fun. Yeah. So, um, again, once more, getting back to water, I know mulch, you always... Mulch is my favorite. <laughs> you know me so well now. <laughs> yes, um, mulch, so two to three inches of mulch throughout your entire garden. Um, if, you, if you can, if you feel like this is, you know, in your, in your wheelhouse, it's not for everyone, but leaving leaves there and making leaves your mulch, if you have a tree that, that loses a lot of leaves, like a tristania or a sycamore or something, make that your mulch. And that's also really beneficial to the habitat garden of just having beneficial insects, having the birds go down there and eat all those insects. But otherwise, shredded redwood, shredded cedar is a great mulch and it helps conserve your water, which it, it makes your garden look finished. And so, if you know, if you don't really care about water conservation, you will love the way it makes it look in terms of just looking picture perfect. Yeah, that's true. It does sort of smooth out the edges of everything. It does, and it also helps with weed suppression. So who who likes to weed? No one. So Actually, I, after a rain, don't you like to weed because they come out so well, easily? Well, <laughs> everything, right, exactly. So you can so also... And then it's sort of fun because it's just like... Yeah, they come out super easily, but if you had a soaker hose, yeah, they it would all happen the all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so weeding, I mean, weeding can be very therapeutic, but a lot of people don't like to, or they don't have time, or, you know, it, it's, there's so many different things, but mulch will help you with weed suppression. It'll help you with water conservation. It can save up to 30 to 40 percent of your water bill, which is amazing, and it also looks fantastic. So... Okay, so mulch. So now, what was the term you used for this kind of gardening? Uh, a habitat garden is, a, but also gardening with a purpose. Gardening with a purpose. And I, I think that's something, even if you weren't thinking of a purpose of butterflies, say, mm -hmm. but just with a purpose for whatever your, your long-term goal is, that makes a lot of sense. I think too many of us don't think that way. Oh, yeah, but because, like, what family does not love to go out in the garden and have their kids see butterflies and birds and everything? So when you're buying a, a plant, like a shrub or something, you don't have to look at it as merely a shrub. You can look at it as a place for birds to nest or to hide, to protect themselves from a hawk or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. But you'll see birds underneath shrubs, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a flower. Uh -huh. But if you want to put a little bird bath out, of course, that's going to bring even more things into the garden, whether it's a bird or if you have a little um, butterfly pond, which is a, a very shallow water area with pebbles on it so they can stand on the oh. pebbles and then get the uh, the drink of water. That's a great way. Oh, I never thought about that. So you just put pebbles in and then look the water over it? Just, just, like just right, I know you have to kind of fill it up every day because it <laughs> evaporates, but it is, you just have so that butterflies and bees and things like that can stand on there and get a drink of water. And that's fun for kids. That's, it's a great, great, um, you know, a little project for kids. Oh, I see. There's, there's a big, big, it's a big, big gongs over there. Yes, there's a big, big wind chime over there. Yeah, well, I think that's uh, really. I, I love the idea of gardening with a purpose, and I particularly like the idea that we can have so much more in our drought tolerant gardens than simply succulents, which are nice. I mean, I, we yeah. saw some beautiful ones. But succulents are great. In addition. And even something like having grasses in your garden, that's also a great habitat plant because birds love to hang out in there. They like to eat the little bugs off of it. But then when it throws up its seeds, the birds can eat the seeds ah, of yes. it as well. And so you leave the seeds longer through the through the through our winter, our uh -huh. cold, <laughs> harsh winters here. And then you just chop them back in February. And it comes right back out again and you've fed all the neighborhood birds and you get to watch all that. Well, and that's true, because I, I have a more of a 
sort of a whatever garden. <laughs> it's certainly not manicured, but I've been just so enjoying the birds, particularly yes. this, this year. I've just seen so many different birds coming in, and they all go someplace different. And some of them, as you say, they, they land in the bushes, and they, you can see them looking for the little bugs that are there, or whatever, right. and others are on the ground. And, so that's pest control right yeah. there. You're saving money and saving time by letting the birds do all the work. Well, Suzanne, thank you again. We we'll always get so many fun ideas when well, we come. Thank you, Nancy. I love talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. If you're like me, you can't wait to get out in the garden and do some new things. So until next time, let's all work on keeping our village green.